Welcome to the Been There Doing That podcast. I'm Gayla Scrivener. And I'm Robert Scrivener. We left the 9 to 5 grind, downsized, and our goal is to have the freedom to live and to work from just about anywhere. to um, talk about our two-week, excuse me, two-week jaunt to Tennessee. We left Missouri um, and went to Tennessee. Short trip. We wish we could go a lot longer, but we just went for not quite two weeks at the end of June. And before we left, for the few weeks before we left, we moved the rooftop tent from our Subaru to our Jeep. Why did we do that, Robert? I was mad at the Subaru. Why? Well, the clutch, the clutch um, master cylinder had five of them in there before it finally works, and it's on the fifth one. The fifth one may be a charm? The fifth one is a factory Subaru. Uh, clutch master cylinder, so hopefully it, it cures the problem. Well, so you didn't really trust it to go on the long trips, so I'm kind of glad, honestly, that it may not be um, my driving that's putting the master cylinder out. Probably not. Yay! <laughs> well, one weekend we moved the the rooftop tent from the Subaru to the Jeep and kind of put the cars together and back ends together and then we kind of slid from one to the other um, because my upper body strength is not that great. No, it's not your upper body strength. We did it together as a team. Yep. And we've gone on some short trips to kind of test things out and you built out a little thing in the back of the Jeep um, to slide in our table and our little kitchen area. How long did that take you to do? One afternoon. It didn't take very long. Just went and got the uh, plywood and uh, kind of built around what I wanted to store inside there, being the table and the uh, couple boxes and then the refrigerator up on top and then two tie downs for two storage boxes on top well i thought that was um, really cool i think the the next addition to that little setup is actually doing a drawer out of one of those little cubby holes instead of having a rubber made tub we'll have a a drawer which will be really cool but that's an upgrade for later well, we were getting ready, what, on the 20th, 21st of June, and we stopped in the driveway. Oh, it was the 19th, and um, we stopped in the driveway uh, in Springfield, and I was starting to unpack the, the Jeep, and um, I came back out, and I saw the look on your face, and you kind of shook your head. And I said, "Uh uh-oh, that fluid's not supposed to be there on the ground. We are leaking transmission fluid out of the transfer case. The output shaft seal is leaking. Not good. I replaced it, uh, I think, 80,000 miles ago, seven years before we moved to Florida. And now it's leaking again. I had to split the cases last time to get it out of there, but I found an easier way. Thank heavens for YouTube. Yes, and a $15 tool. That made life so much easier. And a $4 part, and then plus the cost of transmission fluid. Flushed it out and uh, fixed the repair. Didn't take too long. Didn't have to pull no transfer case out and split the cases. Happy, happy, happy. Now, I was um, out and about working uh, while you were doing most of the repairs, but... Uh, that evening, you were tearing things apart. We watched the YouTube channel, 
and saw that um, there was an easier way than splitting the transfer case. And I went online and saw that that special tool. I don't even remember what that tool was. Lock ring pliers. I thought that, was it Home Depot or Lowe's? Was Home Depot. Showed them online, and you went to go pick them up, and then you showed them a picture of this, said, hey, I need this. Yeah. And they didn't have it. It was online only. Well, then I had this bright idea that maybe Sears might have it, and that was on the way back to the Springfield house. So I um, went in there five minutes before they were to close, and lo and behold, there they were. I found them all by myself. Are you proud of me? Yes, I am quite proud of you. Well, um, while you were under the, the Jeep, didn't you find something else wrong with it? Some sort of bushing or something? It was the rear sway bar bushing was in two pieces, and I figured I'd better replace that and kind of help with uh, keeping the load level and keep from swaying back and forth on the road as much. So I replaced that $20 part. I've got the other side yet to do, but it wasn't in two pieces, so I'm going to wait a wee bit. All right. I was kind of nervous, honestly. Let me tell you. We decided not to take the Subaru, but the Subaru had been running. Just the clutch was in and out, and now the Jeep was leaking fluid. But I had faith we were going to get to Tennessee and get back. I crossed my fingers. But we ended up leaving on uh, the Wednesday morning. First thing, about 7.30 in the morning. And we wanted to get out of Missouri, so we didn't really do any diddle-daddling in Missouri. And our first stop was at... Chickasaw State Park. We had stayed there. When was the last time we stayed there? October 2015. We spent a month out in Tennessee, but uh, that was our first stop. I had a hurricane coming, so we slowed down and stopped there. Well, this time we didn't see any hurricanes in the in the forecast, but we liked the park last time, and so we wanted to look around some more, but we ended up not doing that. I think what happened the next morning, didn't it rain? It rained uh, just as we was zipping up the tent and got a little bit wet, but uh, not too bad. So we booked it on to back roads to uh, Franklin. Yeah. The reason why we were going to Tennessee um, is that I had a a conference to go to. It was um, Ray Edwards Copywriting Academy Live. Um, Pretty cool thing about uh, marketing and um, online business building and so I was to stay at the Days Inn uh, for the weekend Um, but just so happens the exact same weekend had some pretty cool events for you so you were gonna dump me (laughs) dump me in Franklin and then move on to New Market uh, Tennessee to do some ham evangelist stuff what were you gonna do well last weekend in June every year is field day for the uh, amateur radio and that is like the Olympics of amateur radio where everybody goes out and make sure they're prepared for uh, emergency disasters set up the equipment test it out make as many contacts as you can on Morse code CW um, digital modes or even single sideband AMF, I mean, it doesn't matter just as long as you make contacts and check check your uh, equipment, make sure it works, have barbecue, get together with friends, hang out, um, chit-chat with each other, make new friends, all that good stuff. But it's the Olympics of uh, amateur radio. Well, did you get a lot of logs? Uh, last year I got uh, about a hundred and something. This year I got one. Really? You must have been doing a lot of barbecuing and eating and stuff like that instead of um, doing the ham evangelist stuff. The one contact that I did make was to W1AW, which is the headquarters of the. <laughs> it's the headquarters of the ARRL. Uh, up in Massachusetts, and uh, I think it was on 17 meters when we made the contact. But, uh, yeah, we did a lot more um, conversing than we did trying to make contacts. Well, field day is really designed 
for people to that have their ham shacks and they have all their equipment like in their well I guess I know people that have them in their closet they have an actual shack they have an office wherever but it's their more permanent station and then field day is to get things outside and portable but you do that every day so that's not like a big deal for you is it no I like uh, working portable um off battery power, solar power, uh, throw a wire up in a tree. Don't even have to have a tree. Just do a vertical off the the um, the back of the Jeep with the mount and then throw a couple ground radials out. It's fun trying to make contacts and stay in touch with people whenever you're on the go. I know your friends that you usually make contact with at home, they they think it's kind of fun. It's like, where are you at now, Robert? Yeah, and sometimes it's a little more uh, complicated and uh, noisy environment uh, to make contact with them all, but it's uh, it's exciting for them and exciting for me to make contact from different uh, different states to back home. Uh, well, what we call home in Missouri. Well, you got a logging software, and um, that was quite. Well, what was that logging software that that you purchased, and who did you purchase it from? It was from uh, N3FJP.com, and that's a logging software for uh, field day. You can use it for state QSO parties. You could use it for a lot of things, uh, and it's just a simple logging. Pretty cheap, too. There are some free ones out there, but I like the way that this one operates. Well, you didn't use it much for this field day, but maybe next time. <laughs> well, I used it a lot on winter field day, and uh, it's once you purchase it, it's a one-time fee, and then you can just use it over and over and over and over. We like the uh, that website, and we appreciate the, well, I'm not an amateur radio operator, I guess, yet, but yet is the word, isn't it? Yeah, I said it. Well, anyway... Um, I had a wonderful time at Copywriting Academy and met some really cool people and um, got a lot of ideas for building not only our business but helping our clients um, with their online marketing and um, learning about new tools and new techniques and new strategies or just redoing old strategies, you know. Um, so, the last day was on Monday, and it, I thought that we were going to get out of our seminar about mm, 3 o'clock, but it ended up being 5 o'clock. Well, my phone died in the middle of, of the day, and um, I was hoping that it was just a dead battery, but um, ironically, one of the free gifts I got for going to the academy was um, a little phone charger, you know, those remote phone chargers, but I didn't take it that day, so my phone died, and I was um, kind of, not panicked, but I I wanted to get to the, um, what is it, Enterprise for the rental car, but I had no idea how to get there. Because my plan was to leave, our our conference was at the factory there in um, Franklin, Tennessee, and I wanted to go straight to Enterprise and then have them take me to the hotel. Well, since I didn't have GPS, and my phone was dead, I um, knew exactly how to get from the factory to the Days Inn, and thank goodness because you told me the simple way to go, and um I was just hoping that, oh, it's 5 o'clock. Surely Robert will be there. Surely. I hope so. I hope so. And um, so I got there. And I walked into um, the room. Well, actually, I saw the Jeep out in the parking lot. So I was so, super excited. And I went into the to the room and said, we got to hurry. We need to go to drop off the car before they close. And he's like, well, I've got a story for you. <laughs> He had just gotten back. I was expecting him um, to be back 
and Franklin around three, so I thought he'd been there for quite some time. What happened on the way back from Newmarket to Franklin? Well, I got to Franklin at uh, five o'clock. I was planning on getting there at three. Left uh, Newmarket around seven, uh, seven thirty a.m. Eastern time zone. Got down to uh, Sevierville and uh, it was about oh nine o'clock or so, which ain't far. And I just took my sweet time. Got gas. Got a uh, jug of iced tea, and I seen uh, Coleman Factory Outlet. Well, they open in 15 minutes, so I got to stick around and go in and tour. So I did that, came out of the parking lot, and there was Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I like that store. Spend all day. It's like the Bass Pro of uh, Knife Works. Left there, um, drove down to uh, Hank Friendsville and then uh, Lenore City. Made the corner into Rockwood and was headed out of Rockwood, Tennessee, and... Um, check gauges light came on on the on the jeep and uh it was uh not charging so i pulled over and checked it um battery voltage was at i think 11.5 with it running 12.3 without it running and i found the nearest um, auto parts store about 1.9 miles away got there and it was uh discharging down to 10.5 so 10.5 volts um went in and asked for if they had an alternator and they had the right one and i figured i better change the battery because it had been in there i think 11 years as uh, optima battery got our money's worth out of it so i changed the alternator right there in the parking lot of the o'reilly's and uh, had them test the old one make sure it was was bad before i put the new one in and uh, did that, got back on the road, and still beat uh, beat you there to the hotel. So it only put you back two hours. Well, only two hours. Um, could have been worse. Could have been, uh, didn't have my tool assistant there to hand me tools, or I'd have been in there quicker. <laughs> yeah, well, the last time that we changed the alternator in the Jeep was also in a parking lot of an O'Reilly in Colorado, wasn't it? It was in Golden, Colorado, five years ago. And uh, I think it was 80, 80 or 100,000 miles ago on it when we was there. Um, changed it in a parking lot. Thank goodness you take tools everywhere you go. Yeah, that's kind of a necessity of keeping an older vehicle going. Well, with all that excitement, we kind of had a... We dropped the... Um, the rental car off and we immediately we were both starving so we ate at oh charlie's i think it was there in franklin and kind of un- unwound and caught up for the you know because we hadn't seen each other in a whole what four days well it was since friday morning and i got back monday evening so yeah we're usually not apart that long <laughs> we usually travel a lot together but anyway um so we got back to the hotel. You conked out. I think I worked a little while and um, got up the next morning and we weren't in any hurry to, to go. I got up early and did some client work and we left the hotel about 10 o'clock and then we needed to do laundry. So we found a laundromat in Franklin and we ate something and I think we, we made it to Leaper's Fork. I don't know afternoon sometime and uh got onto the natchez trail no natchez trace parkway yes yes it was a uh i think it goes oh from around nashville all the way to uh, louisiana uh, i want to say it's around 400 miles total trip but it's a very scenic drive no um no power lines crossing the um roadway or running parallel with it no advertising signs no gas stations billboards very scenic drive well we had determined that we wanted to go as far on the natchez trace as possible so we hooked into it 
at Leaper's Fork, and we wanted to go as far south as we could. Our first stop was at Tishomingo State Park off of the Natchez Trace Parkway. I think we like to stay there because we like to say the word Tishomingo. Yeah, just like that Piggly Wiggly down there somebody knocked off in that one movie. But uh, they do have the one and only uh, Apron Museum in town, which we did not go visit. No, we didn't make it to town, but um, we stopped there that evening and um, had a nice camp. And then we got up the next morning and drove around the park. And wasn't that the park that had the swinging bridge? Yes, it was, um, I believe, put there by the Army Corps of Engineers or something like that. Um, 1930 or somewhere around the 1930 to 36, I think, was when it was built. Driving back and around that park, um, they have a pool and um, just some really nice picnic areas. Uh, I was quite impressed with that park. Uh, may have to go back there someday. But we left mid-morning, maybe early afternoon. I don't know. We took our time. And then we um, made our way into Arkansas. No, no, no. We weren't in Arkansas yet. We... Um, stayed, got off of the Natchez Trace Parkway in Tupelo, and uh, we had our next night at John W. Kyle State Park in Mississippi. Was that near Helena? No, that was near uh, uh, Batesville, Arcan- or Batesville, Mississippi, jumping ahead, um, just west of Oxford. Mississippi, or I don't remember what road it was, but it was uh, another pretty cool state park um, right there on the lake and a dam and everything, and then we took the back roads over into uh, West Helena, Arkansas, across the Mississippi, coming down out of the uh, Mississippi Hills into the Delta. That was a really cool drive, and um, we made it into Arkansas, and we took some scenic drive, and we're getting close to close to home since Arkansas seems close to home for us. And um, we went up and took a side trip. wasn't much off the beaten track, but it was the Louisiana Purchase State Park. Yes, it was a um, boardwalk that went back in the swamp, and. Uh, it was uh, kind of a benchmark monument type for uh, when the um, they laid out the Louisiana Purchase on which direction to go, I believe. We took some pictures of that and some small little video. and uh, It was um, one of those uh, fascinating uh, things, side trips off into a swamp. And the uh, swamp gets pretty, pretty eerie, and it was uh, really neat to be back there in the swamp and nothing else going around. I had no idea that there was swamp in that part of Arkansas, and that was a stop well worth it. We should have had a little bit more of um, forethought and sprayed ourselves really good with bug spray before we went onto the boardwalk. Lesson learned, anytime there's swamp, spray. But we had a good time anyway, and um, got back on the road, and... We decided, well, we were fairly close to home in relation to where we had been. And um, so we were trying to decide whether we were going to go all the way home um, near Springfield or to stay somewhere. Well, we wanted to get to, what was that ferry? It was the Peel Ferry in um, Round Bull Shoals Lake um, where Missouri and Arkansas meet. I've never um, never been on that ferry. Um, it's on Highway 125, um, whether you're going north or south into Arkansas or Missouri, going north. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's right there on the uh, southern edge of Bull Shoals in a little town, just north of a little town called Peel, Arkansas. Well, we got... We really wanted to go on to the, to the ferry, so we made sure to uh, take the route. Was it 125? And um, 
I'm so glad you remember roads, but we do write a travel log, so <laughs> I can look back on it. But you, I am geographically challenged, and thank goodness you aren't. But um, we're on Highway 125, and once we got to Peel, we were just tired. And so we wanted to stop at the campground just real close to the ferry. And we drove up to the um, little ranger station and he said, nope, campground is full. But just down this dirt road here, there's a resort. They may have an opening you want me to call. Why, certainly. Give them a call and uh, we'll take anything. If they don't have one, that's fine, too. So, um, ended up that there was, uh, he got a hold of someone. He got a hold of Denise, or I was calling Denise and got a hold of Don. And Don said, yeah, we've got an opening. Come on up. So, we drove this little dirt road um, for just a little while and looked like it was a neighborhood, um, honestly, and... We got to what looked like the end of the road to what they called a resort. Really didn't know what a resort was, I guess. But um, Don came out and he said, yeah, you guys, you know, there's an opening. Just park anywhere. We looked around. It's like, where? In somebody's yard? (laughs) It looked like a a kind of a trailer park that was trailers just kind of scattered out through there and nothing for a real rv park or what i would think of as a resort but um i said i'll just park over here in front of this this trailer here and just hook up into the electric pole and uh, that's what we did well denise came back from town and we got to talking with her and she was uh very nice um she had been there for a year and had cleaned up the place quite a bit, and she opened up one of the trailers so that we could um, have use of the bathroom, and she had a couple of cabins, and the uh, clubhouse, I think that's what she called it, it was the main house um, that she rented out, and she was renovating the trailers, but she had a lot of work to do, um, and very nice people, and we were very pleased to have the spot, and it was it was quiet. And um, close to the water, we went down and, and looked at the, the lake. And next morning, we got up, and I was just kind of slowly getting around. And um, I came out of the trailer after brushing my teeth and stuff. And, and you said, oh, we got to go. We got to go now. I thunder woke me up and uh, lightning wasn't far away and I took a picture of the well we had great wi-fi there it was better because we didn't have uh, any cellular coverage there whatsoever on a on sprint and your verizon I don't know if it had any much of signal or not but the wi-fi worked and I uh, used it on my cellular device to look up the radar and we got to go now and I took a screenshot of the uh, the screen and showed it to you, and we had to go now. Yeah, the, the storm was uh, rolling in. Um, thank goodness that we did have the resort's Wi-Fi that we could use because otherwise we just wouldn't have known. But we, I think we closed down the tent and packed up in record time, less than 20 minutes, um, because I had things strung everywhere so um usually it doesn't take very long to fold down the tent but we got a little bit in a rush and we got the zipper stuck but we ended up just being okay with that um the tarp that's not the cover on the on the tent was halfway zipped and we put the tie down straps on and we just knew it was going to be fine so we left the camp spot as it was storming and I realized hmm lightning in the area we're going to be getting on a ferry in the water is this a smart thing to do well I don't know if it's a smart thing to do but we were the second people to cross the ferry that morning and it was uh it had lightened up by then but it was still uh 
rather dreary and rainy and nasty out and uh not the time not a fun time on the ferry i would have liked to done it when it was uh, sunny and bright out and take some pictures and walk around on the ferry but no stay inside your vehicle windows up it's uh, pouring down rain well i'd go back because up um going more north on 125 i believe that's the road we stayed on for a long time but we were going through the mark twain national forest and you grew up in in mark twain national forest but had not it really explored that far south and you had heard of a couple of places and we ended up just getting off the beaten track just to see where we could go hiking and and camping and hercules 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 Glades has a wonderful campground that we have got to go back to. Yes, it does, and it's got a, a fire lookout tower, and and uh, it's just a, a wonderful time to go back when it's a lot drier. And uh, Glade Top Trail was another one. I think it's a a scenic drive in an automobile automobile. That would be uh, another fun time to go down and take a dirt road. See where it goes. Um, and so we we ended up getting back to Springfield at about ten ten thirty uh, that morning. I don't even remember what morning. It all kind of um, blurs together. It was a Friday morning. Well, then, um, so we had not been gone for two full weeks, but we had a really good time, and. Um, I want to ask you, going over the whole trip, do you have anything that you wish we would have t- taken that we didn't, or something that we took that we shouldn't have, or just not, I don't think we have any regrets, but just a lesson learned? More time. Take more time. That's one thing I want to take, is more time to do it. One thing I learned... Not that you asked or anything, but um, I was disappointed that we did not take all of our gazetteer maps. Not that we needed Colorado or or all the west ones, but every time we we didn't realize we were going to Arkansas. But next time we just need to make sure what states are we going to be touching, and because we may dip into that state. We love Gazetteer maps because um, it shows all the little back roads and um, we use it in conjunction with our GPS sometimes. Or sometimes we don't even use GPS. We just go go off of the Gazetteer. But we managed um, because at the Welcome Center, uh, Arkansas Welcome Center, we went ahead and got a map and I at least drew out where we were um, so that you could transfer it to our Nice gaze of tear. Roger, Roger. Well, that is um, our adventure from Missouri to Tennessee, June 2017. And um, we appreciate you listening. And feel free to uh, subscribe to our channel. We'd love for you to um, be along with our adventures. And we ca- we like our our website to be called been there doing that because we haven't always been there and done all that thanks so much